Welcome to the propulsion part of the Spacecraft Technology course. My name is Angelo Cervone and I am Assistant Professor in the Space Engineering Department at Delft University of Technology. This part of the course is divided in three chapters. In Chapter 1, we will discuss the main equations used to characterize the performance of a rocket or propulsion system, and we will take a closer look at liquid and solid propellant engines. Chapter 2 will be about electric propulsion and advanced concepts. Finally, Chapter 3 will focus on micropropulsion systems. In Chapter 1, more in detail, we will first recall the basics of propulsion, including the concepts of thrust and specific impulse. Then, we will briefly mention the different types of propulsion, and we will see how the performance of a rocket can be characterized in a simplified way by means of the ideal rocket theory. We will take a closer look at liquid and solid propellant engines, and finally, we will try to understand how a real rocket works, and what are the most typical deviations from the ideal rocket theory. Let's get started with our introduction. Here you see a nice picture of the European rocket Ariane 5 at launch. I am sure that you have seen many pictures of big rockets similar to this one, but do you know what is exactly rocket propulsion and how does it differ from aircraft propulsion? We usually refer to rocket engines as pure reaction systems. In a rocket engine, a very large amount of fluid, or propellant, is expelled at very high speed in a direction opposite to the direction of light. Remember Newton's third law of motion. Every force is always associated to a reaction of equal magnitude and opposite direction. Thus, if the rocket pushes the propellant out, the propellant in turn pushes the rocket in the opposite direction. This is the same principle on which aircraft propulsion works. But in aircraft engines, the fluid accelerated by the engine comes from outside, while a rocket needs to bring its own propellant on board. From the Introduction to Spaceflight course, you should already be familiar with the most important performance parameters of a rocket. The thrust is simply the force produced by the rocket and is obviously measured in Newton. The specific impulse is defined as the ratio of the total impulse generated by the rocket to the total weight of propellant used to generate it. It is typically measured in seconds. The delta V is the velocity change in meters per second experienced by the spacecraft in which the rocket is installed, when a given mass of propellant has been expelled. In Introduction to Spaceflight, the equations for these three performance parameters have been derived and discussed. Here they are, in a nutshell. We are not going to derive them again in this course. I will just shortly recall some of the most important aspects associated to these equations. Let's start with the rocket thrust equation. If you look at it carefully, you will notice that the thrust is a combination of two different contributions. The first one is what we call momentum term. This is the force generated by the actual momentum exchange between propellant and rocket. This term is proportional to the mass flow rate of propellant and to the velocity at which the propellant is expelled, or jet velocity. The second contribution is called pressure term. This term is generated by the difference between the pressure at which the propellant is expelled from the rocket exit section and the surrounding ambient pressure. Let's take a closer look at the pressure term. It is clear that this term is a function of the ambient pressure and thus the altitude at which the rocket is flying. Maximum thrust will be achieved in vacuum, where ambient pressure is zero. In many cases, the pressure term is much smaller than the momentum term and can be neglected. However, this is not always true. The pressure term can be significant in big rockets flying at low altitudes. Take a look at this example, showing the thrust of a space shuttle main engine as a function of altitude. You can clearly see that the thrust is practically constant at altitudes higher than 25 kilometers but decreases 
significantly at lower altitudes. In order to simplify the thrust equation, we can define an equivalent or effective jet velocity. This parameter takes into account both the momentum and pressure term and allows to write the thrust in a compact way, simply as a mass flow rate multiplied by velocity. Keep in mind, however, that the equivalent jet velocity has no physical meaning. It is a pure mathematical entity used to simplify the way how equations are written. Another very important performance parameter for a rocket is the specific impulse. What you see here is the complete mathematical definition of this parameter. In short, it is defined as the ratio of the total impulse generated by the rocket, that is, the thrust integrated over the burn time, to the total weight of propellant used to generate it. This equation can be written in a much simpler way if the equivalent jet velocity is constant over time, which is true, as we will see, in many cases of practical interest. In this case, recalling that the thrust is simply mass flow rate times equivalent jet velocity, the specific impulse is simply equal to the equivalent jet velocity divided by the gravitational acceleration. Remember that the gravitational acceleration used to calculate the specific impulse is always the value on Earth at sea level, equal to about 9.8 meters per second squared, independently on the place where the rocket or spacecraft is flying. The last important performance parameter is the delta V, usually calculated by means of this equation. This is known as rocket equation or Tsiolkovsky equation from the name of the scientist who derived it for the first time. This equation gives the velocity change of a spacecraft with initial mass m0 when a mass mp of propellant is used by its propulsion system of given equivalent jet velocity. However, this is true only under a number of assumptions. First, there shall be no external forces acting on the spacecraft such as gravity or atmospheric drag. Second, the equivalent jet velocity shall be constant over time. Finally, the propellant shall be expelled in a direction exactly opposite to the flight direction. You can easily imagine that, in many practical cases, these assumptions are not all true. When at least one of them is not met, then the delta v, calculated by means of the rocket equation, is not anymore the actual velocity change of the spacecraft, but it is still a good indicator of the energy transferred by the propulsion system to the spacecraft. We have now seen a short overview of the main performance equations of a rocket. In the next video, we will look at the most important types of propulsion and at how their performance can be characterized. Thank you for your attention.